The long-running LG G series retires this year, and in its place comes a new mid-level flagship built around design and aesthetic beauty. The LG Velvet has 5G on board and the latest version of LG's dual screen attachment, giving it features matched by few other phones at this level. But even though this might be LG's best looking and most useful device yet, it's let down by one or two weird weaknesses, including a slightly baffling camera. I'm Alex from Android Central and this is our review of the LG Velvet. Take a second to subscribe so you don't miss our future videos and we'll jump right in. So the Velvet is easily the best looking phone LG has ever produced. The new device is pleasing on the eyes, comfortable to hold, and significantly less slippery in the hand compared to the company's older models. LG emphasizes symmetry in the Velvet's chassis design, with the gentle taper of the back panel mirroring the curve of the display. Even the water droplet effect created by the new rear camera placement is an improvement on the larger visor style camera modules of the LG V series. We're reviewing the LG Velvet in its fairly subdued Aurora Green hue, however you'll find more ostentatious offerings here in the form of Aurora White and Illusion Sunset. While the metal contact points around the edges of the phone are extremely thin, I found it easy enough to hold onto. They're glossy, not matte like some older LG phones, which does help a bit with the grip. Bottom-wise, there's power, volume, and the dedicated Google Assistant key. Meanwhile, the bottom bezel houses that rarest of things, a 3.5mm headphone jack, though this one isn't the fancy one from the V60, so no quad DAC this time around. The Velvet's audio is pretty middle of the road, with little to praise or really complain about. The bottom firing speaker and earpiece tweeter provide ample volume for casual YouTube sessions, but they do sound a little thin at those higher volume levels. The thing pumping all that content into your eyeballs is a 6.8 inch P-OLED panel at Full HD resolution with a tiny dimpled notch up top. It's pleasing and vibrant with plenty of options to adjust the vibrance or white balance in the settings if you're picky. Otherwise, daylight visibility even under bright sunlight was passable, and the manual brightness slider can get it dark enough for comfortable nighttime viewing as well. This is a 60Hz panel though. That's not a surprise, after all LG's flagship V60 also uses this sort of display, but 90 and 120Hz screens are becoming more common even at the Velvet's price point, take the OnePlus 8 here for instance. I've also noticed some digitizer weirdness with scrolling acceleration in some situations, like quickly swiping between apps using gesture controls. It's hard to describe, but the physics of certain kinds of scrolling seems a little bit wonky even compared to other 60Hz handsets. That's a bit weird because there is plenty of CPU power inside thanks to Qualcomm's Snapdragon 765G platform, which is aimed at less expensive flagship phones with 5G connectivity. In terms of raw horsepower, you're getting the CPU grunt of a flagship phone from around 18 months ago with better efficiency and of course that 5G connectivity. That spec sheet also gets you 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, and a 4300mAh battery. Aside from the aforementioned scrolling weirdness in some situations, the LG Velvet has been a quick and reliable performer. I didn't run into any noticeable memory management issues or slowdowns, either in everyday apps like Twitter or Chrome, or games like Mario Kart Tour or Asphalt 9. What's less than ideal, however, is the Velvet's relatively sluggish in-screen fingerprint scanner, which is noticeably slower than Android flagships in the past couple of years. It's fine reliability-wise, but takes noticeably longer to unlock. And that's all the more problematic considering there's no face unlock option this time around. I've got no complaints around longevity though. The built-in 4300mAh cell easily lasted me a full day, even with heavier use on LTE. With my usage patterns I was looking at around 18 hours off charger with between 5 or 6 hours of screen on time. Predictable battery intensive uses included photography, gaming, and pretty much anything involving use of the LG dual screen attachment, since the dual screen itself is powered by the phone's main battery. As for refills, you're looking at Qualcomm Quick Charge 4 Plus support over a cable, as well as Qi wireless charging, though be aware the latter option is fairly slow considering this is plain old Qi and not fast wireless charging. The LG Velvet runs Android 10 out of the box, plastered with LG UX 9.1. For any newcomers, LG's Android software has taken on a Samsung look-alike aesthetic over the past year or so, which is plain to see throughout the UI. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, it's feature-rich as you'd expect, and the design language is consistent throughout the phone's software. If you've seen a recent LG review, you'll know what to expect here. Bright colours and a whole lot of squircle-shaped icons. 
There are a few useful additions to the software though, like a swipe and hold gesture from the outer edge to activate a helpful one-handed reachability mode, and LG has spun out its own pop-up view mode for most apps, letting you shrink them down into a floating window for easier multitasking. It's also a very Google-centric smartphone experience. Google Feed has been plugged into the LG home screen, and of course the dedicated Google Assistant button lets you summon the Assistant at any time. The software has also been kitted out with Google's live transcription service, which we first saw in the Pixel 4 last year. As for the LG Velvet though, the biggest potential issue for its software is not what it does or doesn't do right now, but how well it'll be supported in the future. LG has a dreadful track record for Android platform updates, so I wouldn't hold my breath for any quick update to Android 11. The most exciting feature of the LG Velvet, and perhaps its greatest selling point, is its dual screen attachment. Like previous versions, the LG dual screen encloses the Velvet in a plastic shell and gives it a second display of the same dimensions as its regular screen. And when it's closed, a small OLED panel on the outside can show you the time and any notification icons. The dual screen has grown quite a few new features lately. More apps, including Google Photos, YouTube, Gmail, Chrome and others, are now supported in the wide view which spans the app over the entire combined width of the two displays. Game support has been expanded too, with more titles now able to use LG's GamePad Mini app. Juggling what is effectively two full-size smartphones might sound a little cumbersome, but it's surprisingly intuitive once you get the hang of it. Both screens have their own launcher layout, and most of the dual screen's controls live behind a floating menu bar on the primary display. It's also very easy to juggle apps between the screens with a three-finger swipe gesture. Now, the LG dual screen isn't as futuristic or impressive as a real foldable, but it does deliver most of the multitasking benefits of those devices at a much lower price point and in a much more durable form factor. You might think it's goofy, but I'm definitely a fan. For me, the Velvet's biggest letdown is definitely its camera. Curiously, it's LG's software post-processing that seems most at fault here. On paper, the Velvet has decent camera specs, a 48 megapixel shooter behind an f1.8 lens, and an f2.2 ultra-wide at 8 megapixels. There's also a third camera used for depth detection. In terms of colours, low-light performance and responsiveness, there's not much to complain about with this camera. There is even the obligatory AI scene detection mode that everyone seems to have these days. But LG's camera insists on an obnoxious level of sharpening in its photos, especially with photos taken from the main camera. This leads to leaves, branches or any area with a lot of grain or fine detail sometimes being given an ugly mosaic effect. Even clouds and blue skies don't come away unscathed here. The same aberrations are visible in video taken from the Velvet's main camera. That's a shame, because aside from the over-sharpening issue, I was impressed with the camera's stabilisation at 1080p. Shooting with the ultra-wide and front-facer, this issue was still kind of there, but didn't present itself quite as much. What's also weird is the Velvet's main camera does perform competently in darker conditions using its night mode feature, so the over-sharpening that we see here in some situations likely is something that LG can address in future software updates. What you can't add in software though is a true telephoto camera. There's just about enough resolution in the main sensor to get you to 2x before you start to lose detail. At 3x and beyond though, photos quickly become blotchy with an unpleasant oil painting like effect. The Velvet's camera just seems kind of half finished right now and in need of a software update or two. Currently, there are plenty of other handsets around this price point that'll get you a better photographic experience. So overall, the LG Velvet is a mixed bag. It's a phone with striking good looks, a modern chipset, and 5G connectivity at a decent price, at least in Korea. Some of its compromises are understandable. You don't necessarily expect the fastest screen or super quick charging around the $700 mark. Plus, the Velvet is a great, affordable way to get in on LG's most promising feature in years. The dual screen attachment is fun, useful, and something the company should definitely keep pursuing. But other flaws, like the camera processing issues we encountered, are tough to justify in any modern smartphone. That leaves a much more narrow audience for the Velvet than LG was probably hoping for. It's a decent mid-range offering with only one real standout feature and a handful of unfortunate compromises. Maybe the Velvet could be the one for you, but you should take a long, hard look at the competition before committing. That's it for now. Stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss all of our future reviews, and let us know what you think of the LG Velvet down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.